The last word today goes to a couple which is loved by our church community because of their ability to talk candidly about tough issues while they share their life experience with us. As you would imagine, there's a lot of life behind these reflections and today is only a glimpse of their journey. I'm Helen Pearson and I've been a member of Newbold Church for 49 years. I'm Mike Pearson and I have also been a member of Newbold Church for 49 years. I've always thought it was funny the way when people asked us how we met, we've always uh, told different stories. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's one gospel and then a second gospel. Yeah, and, yeah. And yours is the apocryphal one. As you say, yes. <laughs> so uh, we do agree on the fact that we met in Norway. Absolutely. In a, on a church motor camp where everybody travelled in minibuses. Yeah, agreed so far. And uh, I started out on the front seat, in the front seat. Yeah. And you started out in the back seat. Yeah. Pretty much. I was in the back seat, yeah, in the corner. And we gravitated towards the middle eventually. Yeah. It was quite a significant time in your life, wasn't it? Was, it was, yeah. My two weeks before the motor camp, my dad had died rather suddenly. We'd had the funeral and uh, I was uh, I was not in a good place really. And one of the one of the good things about meeting you was that you talked to me sensitively and listened to me and showed me understanding. That was a that was a very important uh, first um, strand in our relationship, I think. Yes, and yet, of course, I don't remember any of that. What I remember is that we eventually sat next to each other uh, as we all circulated in the bus. And the first conversation we had uh, was about the fact that we were both in university, different universities, and finding it quite difficult to be Christians in a in a secular environment which had which was quite alien for both of us. Yeah, absolutely. I thought it was probably easier for you that you were doing it better than me because your temperament you make easier contact with people than I do and I thought that probably helped you with witness or, or at least surviving. What I do remember of that conversation is that we talked about books and the books we were reading and the books that we had been, um, that had been helpful to us while we were, yeah. while we were there. And that conversation about books and ideas, and we've been talking about books ever since, yeah, really. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure people want to know, well, what was your first impression? Yeah. And my first impression was uh, I noticed, as I have always said, the, be the first thing that attracted me was your hands. <laughs> Show them to the camera. <laughs> um, the way you used your hands and uh, was important to me and your eyes. And at that time, there was a... Um, um, cartoon character called Torchy the Battery Boy who had a slightly turned up nose like yours and so the girls in the in our group used to call you Torchy the Battery Boy. <laughs> and of course it had never occurred to me that the, the parts of my body that you would latch on to <laughs> were my, my hands and my <laughs> nose. <laughs> First thing I remember about you was your vitality and your uh, I don't know, you just seem to make contact with people immediately. And you, uh, in that respect, in uh, those parts of your temperament, you were everything that I wasn't. And yes. I, th I thought it was, and I thought the energy was very attractive. Ooh. Well, we did come from very, very different backgrounds, didn't we? I mean, so different. Yeah. When I first came to your house, I couldn't believe that people could talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kept thinking, why is it so quiet here? 
what, <laughs> what should we talk about? <laughs> and that difference in temperament has been a challenge to it. Oh, oh, well, in background and temperament yeah. that goes with it. And also that uh, in all things you're very fast and in all things I'm extremely slow. Uh, I'm quite slow in getting ready on time. That's true. <laughs> um, but yes, that difference in in temperament has been uh, a challenge for us. What do you think have uh, have been our other major challenges? I think I think the fact that you came from a family, or well your dad was a pastor, so you came from a family that was deeply committed to the church. It was kind of just part of the whole feel of the family, and that was quite different from mine. Uh, I mean, m my parents both went to church, but they weren't attached to the church, or I think committed to it in, in the same way that your parents were. And uh, I, it took me a while to really get a hold of it. I don't think I really understood that properly until I came to Newbold and became similarly committed. Yes, and actually coming to Newbold did do a lot for our marriage, yeah, didn't it? Yeah. We came to Newbold a year after we were married and we were called, uh, I was called to teach English and you were called to teach... Philosophy and sociology. And French, was it? French as well, yeah. May we. Oui. <laughs> Long time ago that was. Yeah. And also... Uh, Roy Graham, the principal, s said to us, didn't he, I want you to uh, bring all the questions that you've been, asked, you've been asked and asking at university and bring them to Newbold and uh, please have some answers as well. Yes, and believe it or not, in those days, yeah, we were brought to Newbold for our youth and were by a long shot the youngest members of staff. Oh in yeah, fact... Yeah. There were there were students who thought we were students and who thought we were uh and who were in fact uh older than we were. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we did come a bit green behind the ears, didn't yeah, we? Yeah. Yeah, we did. There was that guy on the first weekend. <laughs> he was he was from California, I remember. <laughs> Merrily, breezily came up to me and said, I say, what course are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> But coming to Newbold did kind of create a glue for us, which we, when we were both teaching in London, we hadn't had in the same no, way. No, I think, I think we both have come to feel that for a marriage to uh, have uh, real depth to it, uh, it has, has to be about something else as well. It has to be some sort of commitment to something beyond yourself. Yes. And Newbells offered us that in bucketfuls. Yes, yes. It was the best thing we ever did, it wasn't was. it? Here we are now, can you believe it, coming up for our 50th wedding anniversary. Have we got it sorted? <laughs> A short answer, no. Um, no, I think it's uh, important to say that we've... We've had our ups and downs, quite a few downs over the years. Uh, there have been times when we've really got stuck. Uh, we've had uh, arguments. We've not been short of arguments over the years. I think we're getting better at it. Yeah. Finally, finally get the feeling that we're getting the hang of this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but there's been a lot of trial and error. And uh, I think, uh, again, our different temperaments have... Uh, have played a part in our disagreements and struggles, and it's um, it's certainly not been plain sailing. No, and uh, especially when the children were very small, and um, you were doing your doctorate, and I was at home, and wasn't quite sure who I was or where I was going. That was a, yeah. a very, very difficult time. Yes, and, it, well, and I didn't really understand. I was, I was still a boy, really. Uh, well, and and yeah, so was I. And I mean, I was a girl. It <laughs> and it, it, it really took me time to get used to all the responsibilities of marriage and parenthood. Yes, and I didn't know 
who I was or where I was going or what I wanted. And uh, uh, people often ask us in those situations, do we pray together? Yes. And the short answer is... The short answer I'm afraid, is, n is no. <laughs> Not in the sense that we uh, sort of kneel down together. But I think the answer in a way is yes, because we talk about just about everything, lay everything on the table. And in those serious, close conversations, there's a kind of, there's a kind of prayer-like atmosphere to them. Well, uh, and I think what we have come to over the years is that we need to do confession. Yeah. Yes, we need to do it to God, but actually to say who you are, warts and all, and own who you are, warts and all, to the person who you love most in the world and who you want to keep loving you yeah. is... A kind of conf kind of confession yeah. and prayer. Yeah, uh, one of the ways w we've done that, and I don't think we discovered this until quite late, but uh, we've said to each other on more than one occasion, "Don't take any notes of what I'm going to say in the next <laughs> three minutes, but I need to say it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't, give, don't give too much importance to it, but let me rant for a few minutes. Yeah, get it out. And, and Put it a, on the table. That was, a, that, was, yeah, that was a kind of confession. It's almost a kind of prayer because, because you're able to say, well, this is, this is some of the nonsense inside me and I think you've got some nonsense inside you yeah. and let's get it out. Yes, and decide together what is nonsense and yeah. what is... What's real. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And I think we have... We have struggled to do that. And I think probably the other thing that we have said a number of times is that perhaps the best, the best um, kind of discovery we made about having rows is that things get better if you stop taking the moral high ground. And I think it took me a long time to realise that I was taking the moral high ground. I thought I was just, I don't know what I thought, but it took me a long time to understand that I needed, to, as somebody taught me, to speak from my poverty, not from my... Vantage point. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Because yeah. we talk about so much, we know what's on each other's minds and we know that the other one we'll be paying, praying pri privately about that and yeah. trying to get to grips with it. Yeah. So there, there's a kind of communion in that, even though we're not in the same place at the same time. Yeah. There's a, there is a kind of communion in that, I think. Yes, and there is a great uh, comfort to me in knowing that you will pray privately and I know you will pray about us mm. and we believe very much in prayer but somehow I think we've come to believe that prayer can be a, a, a mask rather than a revelation. Uh, uh, when you're praying even with a spouse but certainly with other people there is an element of performance to yeah. it, and I think yeah. prayer has got to be without that sort of performance. Yes. Yes. Um, so, so when we get stuck, that's what we do, really. Just keep putting it on the table and mess and all, and somehow finding yeah. our way, yes. our way through it. I often pray, and I think you do as well, that, that God will be with me and with you, but also between us. A spiritual life between us has been very important in the work we have done, in, for instance, in our Sabbath school class, in the workshops and weekends and whatever that we've done. That has had to be, that sort of honesty has had to be... Yeah. Yeah. core to it really yeah
And we have discovered that if we don't do that work, when we do something together, it's not good. No. The way that we've kind of worked together and been together uh, in many different places, different times, doing different things, has stood us in good stead in retirement as well. Because yes. we, we, I particularly wasn't sure I was going to manage retirement. No. Uh, but uh, I think one of the lessons we've learned in retirement is, is that we both need our space. We both need <laughs> to be by ourselves part of the day often. Yes, and we, need, we did need actually to uh, say that, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> we needed to say sometimes, uh, because we've done a lot of our, um, we've, we've done a lot of our marriage uh, making together on wa walking, walking yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we did need to say sometimes in retirement, I need to go for a walk by myself. Yeah. And we both yeah. have had to be honest about that. And since we both needed it, it, wasn't, it hasn't been, it yeah. wasn't hurtful really. No, and, be and beyond having our own space, we've also in retirement had our own projects. I mean, we've, we've yes. done... Th We've done things together, but we've also done quite a lot individually, yes. pursuing our different interests. And I think that it kind of helps you come together and you've got something different to talk about and yes. and uh, moan about. Yes, and I think that has been a secret throughout, that actually, although Newbold has been our home, it hasn't been as our friend Lionel Blue says, our prison. And so we have both been in other different places, yes. sort of together or separately. Yeah. And that has yeah. brought stuff in. Yeah, I've met lots of interesting people. Yes. Who we've been able to talk about and with. Yes. Yes, and who have enriched each of us and both of us yeah. in a wonderful way. But we have also, throughout our lives, kind of shared people. So you've done the ethical bit and then I've done the counselling bit. And we've kind of put those two together and we haven't really stopped doing that since no. we've been retired. <laughs> 